I loved to play baseball. I loved to hit, and I had some ability that direction. And then, boy, that was my game. The greatest game there is, greatest game there ever was. And everything that ever happened to me, good, was because of baseball. I had three people in a row yesterday. They thanked me for giving them a chance to see the Hitters Hall of Fame. It's a great spot, and the kids love it, and the parents love it. Because some of the guys they're seeing in that very auditorium they saw play. It was 1941. What people were talking about more than anything else that summer was a tall, skinny kid from San Diego who was tearing the cover off the ball for the Boston Red Sox. The sports writers called him the Splendid Splinter. Ted Williams said he wanted to be the greatest hitter who ever lived, and he was having the greatest season any modern big league player ever had. The last of the 400 hitters, he hit 406 that season. And in the All-Star game, with two men on base, two men out, and the American League trailing, he hit a home run which won the game. Since the 1941 season, only one big league player has come close to hitting 400 again. Williams himself. But remember this, to do anything well in sports, you have to practice. Hitting a baseball is no different. You've just got to take the time to work at it. And this means practice, and more practice, and more practice. You'd better if you want to be a hitter, because it's the toughest thing to do in sports. When you can get him thinking out there, it has to work for your advantage because remember one thing about the pitcher. What about it? He's the dumbest guy in the ballpark, <laughs> right? Right. No, <laughs> we all agree on that. It's Directly. Directly. One of the great things about fishing, for me, was it was constant anticipation. It was constant preparation of any fishing trip I ever went on. And then it's constant memories. For Ted Williams, whose quest for fish and game has taken him to the five continents and down hundreds of rivers and waterways, this is the one that always brings him back. Ted Williams' love for the Atlantic salmon is no sudden infatuation but a long, abiding romance that quickens his pulse and his step whenever the season is at hand. And now in the late fall, he's brought his son, John Henry, to scout the river, anticipating the fishing he will do here in the spring. For fishermen such as Ted Williams, the Atlantic salmon represents nobility of the highest rank. Its silvery leaps and tackle-bending runs are a challenge to his ability as an angler. Its finicky appetite and touchy disposition, a challenge to his ability to tie flies. Its romantic life cycle over long ocean journeys to the spawning grounds where it was born perhaps five years before, make it an epic fish story. At this point, William says, he's marveling again that after all this anticipation, it has finally happened. The preparation, the thrill of a perfect cast, the presentation of the fly, the ultimate strike, a series of adventures. No two salmon hit exactly alike. One might come up with a big boil and a giant leap. Another might arrive on tiptoes and just barely take the fly in its lips. Williams must now work closely with Curtis to get the salmon to the net. He prefers netting because he will release many more than he'll keep and they are easier to handle and less likely to be injured in a net than on a beach. The fish, tailing now in Windit, makes his last run. But Williams turns him quickly. He cannot go again. And Roy closes in with the net. It's a good-sized salmon, ten and a half pounds. But it's a hen, female, and Williams elects to release it. Probably the greatest achievement that I ever really did, other than play baseball, was that I became a, a, a Navy pilot, Navy, a Marine pilot. 
And I can't say that there wasn't excitement and, and uh, excitement and, and satisfaction. And I got to say this about the Marine Corps. Jesus, it was the greatest bunch of guys I ever met. Uh, in Korea, I was on a mission, well above the 38th parallel, on a big coordinated flight with the Army Air Force. And on this particular uh, mission, why I, I went in t too low on my run, and uh, I got hit with ground fire, and uh, I managed to get back over the field and had to, had to make a belly landing. Uh, my plane was on fire, and uh, I want to tell you, I was as scared as I've ever been in my life. I was lucky to get it down, and I managed to walk away. And uh, I was just one lucky guy. Having completed serving his country for the second time in the Marine Air Corps, Ted Williams once again prepares to return to play baseball. Come on right on out here. This is all you'd have to learn how to do. You see what I'm doing right here? I'm just letting this line come right back to the rod and flipping it out. Try it. I'll hold on to the rod with you first time and show you. Right there. And once more. Easy does it. Right out again. Now, you're on your own, buddy. Hey, that's good. Do it again. And all you have to do is practice a little bit, and you'll become an expert. That's real good. What's your name? Freddie Styler. Freddie Styler, huh? What's yours? My name's Ted Williams. Ted Williams. There goes as good a hitter as there ever was in this game. And I think I've come close to that. And I, I, that, that's just as good. And I think, certainly even more importantly than that, that I was a hell of a guy. I had compassion. I had interest in people that needed help. Uh, my, my, uh, my whole family dates back to charity. And uh, I like that. I like that. And I think about it. And I certainly am a very, very sympathetic person and forgiving person. Uh, it's awful easy to find something wrong with somebody and sometimes hard to find something good. And, uh, but I hope I'm not in that category. <laughs>